I'm Kelly Harrell, author, animist, and creator of the Weekly Rune. Soul Intent Arts is my soul tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, actionable animism, soul tending, and how all of those intersect through sacred activism on my path. Thank you to everyone who listens to the podcast, to those who send notes and share their experiences of the runes. That's what it's all about, and I'm grateful for the engagement. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the podcast and the RuneCast possible with their financial support. If you've benefited from the RuneCast, the podcast, or the ton of free articles on the runes, animism, and soul tending on my website, you can show your support through buying my books, which you can find at soulintentarts.com or Amazon, by making a one-time contribution through PayPal or Square, or by contributing regularly through Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and search for Kelly Harrell. You can also subscribe to the paid version of The Weekly Rune there, and thank you for it. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a runecast that I've done for years, focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. The Weekly Rune is now available in full on Patreon.com. Just do a search for Kelly Harrell to find it, and you can find the archive of all past runecasts on my site, soulintentarts.com. If you're not sure what a half-month is or what the runic calendar is, Listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune. It's explained fully at the beginning of every runecast. Welcome to 2021. The speed bump getting here was a biggie, and that is largely what we're going to talk about in this episode. The transition through Iwas into what comes next. Iwas is traditionally the rune of becoming. It's smack in the middle of the Elder Futhark, the 13th rune, so it represents a turning point of sorts, a meeting of extremes at middle ground. For a lot of people, that middle ground is literally and figuratively Midgard. With this yew tree overtone of world tree earthy roots that support from beneath and branches that rise into our interpersonal, Iwas brings us a symbolic awareness of ourselves in this life, in form, as a catalyst of all things. We are embodied, souls in flesh, and that synergy point gets shit done. Midgard is the spark of agency. It's the fusion of the best of all our qualities to leave the planet better than we found it. Except for when it isn't, right? So many reasons why that perfect delivery into form doesn't go so great. And most of them are things we can't help. Y'all know that saga. Big systems, family systems, ancestral trauma, personal trauma. You know, you and I have been having this conversation for a long time. And if I haven't said it lately, thank you for participating in it and moving it forward in your own lives and work. I know that you do. So I'm not going to outline all of the speed bumps. I did that all last year. We've all been living our versions of them. So let's keep showing up for each other and scaling them, yes? What I'm going to focus on instead is where we are in the great human trajectory of life past all that stellar stuff that happened around winter solstice. In the context of this half-month rune, I was. It sounds big. It is big. Lofty even, but here we go. The solstice itself was with Yera, a massive house cleaning. And the aftermath of that is I was. The house may be clean, but when it's done with a flamethrower, now you can't find the TV remote, right? Basic life looks super different after this kind of cleansing. Remember, I was the middle the meeting place of life and death. I don't know about y'all, but over the solstice, my playing field was leveled 
again. I'm not even going to play that what that means for me is the same as it is for other folks. Nobody in my family died. No one is sick. And I say that to keep where I'm going with this in the proper context, which is my sense of being leveled was psychological. It's very internal and it's about my inner cosmology, which (laughs) is so I was. The ultimate midpoint of soul and flesh is embodiment. It's a life lived aware, fully, completely present to the junction of soul and form. And even that way of being in this culture isn't all it's cracked up to be. I've blogged for years about visions that I've had. And somewhere in there, I've also blogged about prophetic moments that I've had. And the thing that is missed or downplayed about those kinds of of split in half divinity is they take a deep toll on your life. They're not the dazzling enlightenment that 90s gurus sold all of us. Visions and prophecies fragment your mind. They rupture your emotional state. They gut your relationships. They ravage your body. Even when the info that can't be known is flooding in, you doubt your very existence. Well, my guides call that gutting experience of rapture the cradling. Yes, that's what I said, the cradling. When they first spoke that word to me, it came with a felt sense of rapt nurture, literally being wonderfully, perfectly swaddled and secure. The, the contrast of which compared to the hell that I actually feel when those moments are playing out was, was seriously bitter irony. In those deepest revelatory states, I do not feel held. I know that I am, but I don't feel it. So when my guides described it as the cradling, I just kind of had to nod and leave it at that. Actually, I was an asshole to them, but you know that's not on topic. And y'all pretty much already knew that that was what really happened anyway. Okay, so this time... When it came over winter solstice, I understood why they called it the cradling. And it's not some Hallmark greeting card, like, you know, bookmark to remind me that when that's, you know, that when the shit hits the fan is when I'm the most held, right? That's the line that we've all been fed. The cradling doesn't feel like shit because I suck or because you suck or because we're not doing enlightenment right or because our guides have abandoned us. It's not that at all. The cradling sucks because our human structures that are supposed to be in place to cradle us during these pivotal earth moments have long been vanquished from this realm. There's no neighbor coming by to lay a quartz grid and leave a warm bowl of soup. There's no boss saying, don't worry about it. Take all the time you need. And when you process it, share what you learned with the team. I mean, that shit is the fairy tale. Folks who live intentional lives betwixt are not recognized by their social support, our medical communities, our psychological mentors, and even in many cases by our own spiritual leaders, by our chosen spiritual leaders. Further, most folks still don't even share with those communities that they even have these kinds of experiences. In those moments of being split down the middle by insights beyond what seems holdable, we're not supposed to have to worry about who's going to pick up the kids. We're supposed to be cradled by our communities so that we can embody our transpersonal selves in those pivotal moments and any time we endeavor to do so. I hear myself saying those words, (laughs) and I don't think they give credence to what that really means, because we have no conceptual understanding of how that would feel. The full-on flame of life force that you are isn't allowed to be expressed here. So when it is, you're altered, you're mentally ill, you're defying logic and science, and you're not a team player. How well can you hear me say 
that your most awe-impassioned moments of vision and prophecy wreak the havoc that they do, not because there's something wrong or missing with you, but because life around you can't support you in having them. It can't cradle you or me or any of us to be that embodied and empowered. I'm not saying that depression and psychosis aren't things that can need multi-strata of intervention. They are. And, And I'm also not saying that they're some awesome divine gift and we should just leave them alone. Those extremes are still missing the cradling. But I'm absolutely saying that they are the canaries for the divine experiences that we are forbidden to have here. Yes, I will say it again. The experiences that we see as depression and psychosis and divine intervention, they are the canaries for experiences that we're forbidden to have here. And the forbidding is what makes them gut us. A visceral way that we were all intended to experience being human has been taken from us. And so when we experience it, it feels violent. It's so outside our frame of the system that when we have those experiences here, life here further opens up to harm us. But what does all of that have to do with right here, right now? The message of Iwas in this season of post-solstice is life betwixt is hard. And right now, every human is betwixt and adrift. Every human person on the planet is now a trauma survivor. We really were before, but y'all already know that whole narrative too. My point is now we're living it out loud every day. And the effects of that truth are that all life force, human and non-human, is experiencing the distress signal. It's a level of PTSD, compact PTSD, that is absolutely unprecedented on the planet before. And we have to start moving through every day, understanding that about ourselves, our neighbors, our boss, our water. We are walking trauma right now and how we move through the world matters now more than ever in our lives. Maybe not everyone is having a revelatory prophetic moment right this minute or even over that eclipse, but you know what? It's okay if you do. Saying that doesn't make it easier or better. It doesn't make a system suddenly bring you soup, but you're not alone. And you're not the problem. That is what happened over my solstice. Oh, wait. So you still want to know what the visionary moment was? Okay. So on a personal level, it was about shadow parts being the guardians of non-neurotypical wiring and coming into relationship with them in a different way. And the collective expression of that vision wasn't terribly different from that. In the full weekly runecasts for the last few months, I guess, over the last six to eight months, I've talked about how the rules are changing. The strategies we've assumed for how we engage Weird and Orlog to move through this plane are changing, and we haven't gotten the new playbook yet. Part of our upheaval is trying to navigate with the old ways, even though they don't work anymore dealing with the bouncers of the old ways who don't want to let us move on, trying to feel our way through with no grasp on how to move at all, not knowing how long this state of flux will last, and wondering how to plot our course and ground and embody despite all of that. The absolute upheaval through that eclipse and the convergence and solstice and COVID and revolution cleared a path, by which I mean with a bulldozer, no finesse, cleared out shit that we would not otherwise do ourselves or don't know to do. And now, right this very minute now, we get a breath, a tiny, 
short breath with a glimpse of new grounding. It's not the full reboot. We're still in the midst. There's still files missing. The update's going to screw things up that, that we think worked fine before. There's more to come. But right now, we have a breather. And we gained information. Whatever happened over that eclipse for you, for us as a culture, it's the freaking gospel of what needs to change or be let go, whatever. But see it for what it was and do what you can to implement it as a new way of being. We need it so that we have better shock absorption for the next speed bumps for ourselves and for our communities. Throughout this season of the podcast, I've included the half-month affirmations at the close of each episode. But for this one, it's the challenge of I Was from Runic Book of Days that rings deepest for me right now. And that is, is to greet the true self and stand in it ongoing. That means, no matter what, you be you. All of you as much as you can be. Thanks for listening. If you have questions or insights about working with the runes in season, or you just want somebody to bounce your ideas off, feel free to email me at kelly, that's K-E-L-L-E-Y, at solentinarts.com, or you can call into the Anchor app, which you can download for Android or iPhone. Also check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and various other podcast platforms. And you can learn more about me, Runic Book of Days, and my work by visiting solentonarts.com or on Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird. Mm